Hello and welcome to a new episode of Mobile Video Editing. Let's start by watching the freefall transition, which is the subject of this video. The transition simulates the effect of a video being dropped from above the top of the screen, free falling, bumping into the bottom of the screen, rebounding once, and then coming to rest, filling the screen. The effect is different from sliding a video from the top of the screen in the fact that when sliding a video, the speed with which the clip slides down is uniform, while in freefall, there is acceleration, so the speed with which the video falls increases with every frame. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison between freefall and sliding transitions. To show acceleration, I use the formula for a falling body that calculates the distance traveled by an object falling for a given time. This is the formula. Be assured, you won't need to have an understanding of physics to continue watching this video and implementing this transition. Having said so, I will include a detailed explanation after the tutorial ends. The duration of the freefall is 30 frames, which is one second for a 30 frames per second project. The duration of the rebound is 11 frames. The whole transition then takes 41 frames. Using the formula, I found the position of the video for each one of those 41 frames. Only position Y will be affected as the video moves only vertically. First, straight down for the freefall, and then up and down for the rebound. The list of position Y for each frame is included in the description of the video and looks like this. The next step is to manually create a keyframe for each of the positions in the list. This takes about 5 minutes, but the good news is that once it's done, it can be saved as a motion preset and be reused. So let's get started. Open a new project in LumaFusion and add a video to the main track. Use a video that is a couple of seconds long. The one I'm using is 3 seconds and change. Edit the video and go to Frame and Fit, Size and Position. Make sure you're at the beginning of the video. Start entering the positions in the list. The first line says that at the 0 seconds and 0 frames mark, position Y should be minus 200. Position the clip at position Y equals minus 200 and add the first keyframe. The second line says that at the 0 seconds and 1 frame mark, position Y should be also minus 200. Move forward 1 frame, position the clip at position Y equals minus 200 and add a keyframe. Let's do it one more time and then the video will skip the rest of the keyframe entering process. The third line says that at the 0 seconds and 2 frames mark, position Y should be minus 199. Move forward one frame, position the clip at position Y equals minus 199. A frame will be automatically created for you. This is because unlike the previous frame, this frame changes the value of position Y. Keep entering the data until the 41 keyframes are entered. In the editor screen, the result will look like this. Go back to the timeline. This is how the transition looks like. Now, you'll need to save the transition as a motion preset so it can be reused without having to enter the keyframes again. Edit the video once more and go to Frame and Fit, Size and Position. Click on the Save Motion preset that's shown in the screen. Give the transition a name and save it. The saved preset will now appear under the Favorite Presets tab in Frame and Fit. Now let's give it a try. I'm starting with a new project that already has three videos, each one of them four seconds long. 
For the second and third clip, we'll need to split the part to which the transition will be applied. As you remember, the transition is 41 frames long, which is equivalent to 1 second and 11 frames. The second clip starts at the 4 seconds mark, so it should be split at the 5 seconds and 11 frames mark, as shown on the video. The third clip starts at the 8 seconds mark, so it should be split at the 9 seconds and 11 frames mark, as shown in the video as well. Now move the first part of each of the two videos you just split to the track above on the top of the ending of the previous video as shown. Edit each of the two videos you just moved to the top track, go to frame and fit and apply the freefall preset you saved earlier. Let's check the result. That's it for the actual transition. Now, let's talk about the generation of the list. As I mentioned before, I use the formula for a falling body that calculates the distance traveled by an object falling for a given time. You can find a link to an article on this subject in the description of this video. In order to use the formula, I had to do some adaptations. I used frames as the unit of time, position y units as the unit to measure distance, and position y units per frame per frame as the unit to express acceleration. The original formula uses g, the gravitational acceleration. For this transition, I needed the video to drop 200 position y units in one second. So I put the information in a spreadsheet and adjusted the acceleration to achieve a one second freefall. The acceleration is 0 0.48 position y units per frame per frame. Here's how the spreadsheet looks like. It has one column for the frame number and one column for the acceleration, which should be the same for all rows. Finally, it has a column that is a calculated value that reflects the free fall formula, with the acceleration being taken from the values in column B and the time expressed in frames taken from column A. For the sake of simplicity, all values are rounded to the closest integer. There are many ways in which this transition could be improved. For example, you could add elasticity properties to the video being dropped, so it would contract as it hits the bottom of the screen and expand and rebound. If you're up for the challenge, I would love to see your video. So this is it for this episode. Feel free to add a comment, share your ideas, like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.